Hello and welcome to my video on Ultrasound. This is the second video in P3. This is still in the medical application of physics topic. So yet again we need to do a recap to P1. You need to remember that ultrasound, or sound in general, is a longitudinal wave. The ultrasound is very high frequency, that is above human hearing. That sound can be reflected. In space there is no sound because there are no particles for the vibrations to spread and that sound travels fastest in solids, faster than in liquids, and it travels faster through liquids than it does in gas. So, we need to look at how... Primrose is currently playing with my props. How um, sound changes when it hits a boundary. This is what is called partial reflection. So this is the air, and this is the glass being modelled by a bit of bubble wrap, and the sound um, is being modelled by my pipe cleaner. So the sound comes travelling along here, and then it, when it gets to the pipe, the um, when the pipe cleaner gets to the boundary between the air and the glass, you'll notice it's much harder for the pipe cleaner or the ultrasound to travel through. And what it does is it changes direction at the boundary. Some of the sound is reflected back on itself and some of the sound is transmitted and refracted once it changes the, once it goes through the boundary. So this is what a diagram of partial reflection will look like. You've got your ultrasound transmitter up here and we've got two different boundaries. When the ultrasound is sent out the transmitter at boundary one, we have partial reflection. So some of it is reflected back and some of it is transmitted and refracted. You'll notice here that I've got my angle of incidence and my angle of reflection and that the light doesn't continue in a straight line, it is reflected so it changes direction. The light continues on to the second boundary, boundary number two, and yet again it is reflected. You will also have some transmitted and refracted but I haven't drawn that in. You notice my angle of incidence and my angle of reflection here, and for reflection, the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. Both of these signals are then sent back to the ultrasound transmitter. You will notice that I have drawn my diagram with a ruler and a pencil. This is very important for the exam. I have seen mark schemes where it specifies you need to use a ruler and a pencil, and you don't want to get an examiner who is in a bad mood. So this is what the trace will look like on what we call an oscilloscope. This is just a piece of equipment connected to the computer that will show you what your ultrasound looks like. So we've got boundary one and boundary two. On the oscilloscope, there'll be a grid and this will be the time base. What we want to find is this, do a time between the start of each pulses. The time base here is 0 0.066 seconds per division who will notice there are four division between the start of each pulses. So the time between each pulses is four times 0 0.066, so 0 0.26 seconds. An oscilloscope can also be used to tell its distance. Here we have our ultrasound coming across. It's reflected at boundary one and it's reflected at boundary two and we want to find the distance between boundary one and boundary two. For this, we use our equation speed equals distance over time. We just rearrange it, so speed distance is equal to speed times time. It has two main uses in medicine. Prenatal scanning for babies in the womb, who they live in a bubble of fluid, so ultrasound scanned is used for these images. And kidney stones, stones that get stuck um, and make it hard and very painful to wee. Ultrasound can break down these stones so they come out in the flow of urine. This is an example taken about a year ago of a very, very small baby, about two inches across. Um, he's a lot larger and a lot cuter now. So, that is all the facts that you need to know about ultrasound. We're going to go on to our questions now. There are some hard questions at the end. So what I'd like you to do with these questions is again, pause and try these for yourself. The questions are, what can ultrasound be used for? 
What happens to ultrasound when it hits a boundary? What equation can be used to work out the distance between boundaries? What shows the trace from an ultrasound? Why, can hum why can't humans hear ultrasound? So pause and try this for yourself. So these are your questions. Notice the question five now says, why can't humans hear ultrasounds? Once you've had a go at that, these are your answers. So what can ultrasound be used for? It can be used for prenatal scanning and treating kidney stones. What happens when ultrasound hits a boundary? Partial reflection happens. Some is reflected and some is transmitted and refracted. What equation can be used to work out the distance between boundaries? That is speed equals distance over time. What shows the trace from an ultrasound? That is an oscilloscope. And why can't humans hear ultrasound? Because it is above the hearing range. Here are your answers. If you got full marks, fantastic, well done. If you didn't, go back and watch the video again. I have some hard questions for you here. These are going to be for students that are aiming for the top grades. These questions weren't, the answers to these questions weren't in the video. You're going to need to have a think about these. They are hard. So, why isn't x-ray used to image a fetus? What is the disadvantage of using ultrasound compared to x-ray? And as a little hint, I'll show you my scan again. And why aren't CT scans used for broken legs? Pause and try this for yourself. So now you've had a go at those, they are tricky questions. Here are the answers. Why isn't x-ray used to image a fetus? This came into the previous video on x-rays. Oh look, Primo's just bought us a pipe cleaner. So why isn't x-ray used to image a fetus? This because x-rays increase the chance, remember we have to be really careful with our wording, the chance of the mutation in the fetus, DNA. This may lead to cancer and cell death, which can be harmful. What is the disadvantage of using x-ray compared to ultrasound? So if we just have a look at my scan, you'll see it's a bit fuzzy, whereas x-rays are generally very clear and not fuzzy. And why aren't CT scans used for broken legs? That's because CT scans use a high dose of x-ray, and then we need to think back to our answer to question one, and x-rays increase the chance of mutation, etc, etc. You want to use the safest method for each imaging technique. Did you get full marks? If so, well done. If not, go back and watch the video again.